Hi everyone, Asaf Paris here. In a couple of weeks, I'm doing a panel at the Michigan Comic Con about Sunflower by Post Malone Sway Lee. Sunflower is the theme song from uh, the movie Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. And of course, it's a huge hit on its own. And so in preparation for this panel, I decided to revisit this graph that I made uh, a couple months ago. And Thanks to Isotopes RX-7, I also kind of came up with a cool way to demonstrate uh, the effectiveness of what I show here in this graph. So before I show you that, I want to quickly recap what I did in this graph. Basically, uh, what it shows is uh, the chorus is made up of eight mini phrases, each a measure long. And each of the phrases, or most of the phrases, end on the note E. Now the song is in the, in the key of D major. And so you see that blue line here represents D, which is the tonic note, or the, sort of the home scale degree of the song. But because each of these mini phrases ends on E, it kind of retains tension. Scale degree two is uh, the most common scale degree uh, there is in this genre to kind of retain melodic tension. When a phrase ends on scale degree two, it's usually, the effect is usually kind of retaining tension that's often resolved later. And here they end one, two, three phrases on E, and then it resolves down to D. In this is the uh, middle of the chorus. So in the middle of the chorus, it resolves to D for the first time, but over an E minor chord. So it's not a complete resolution. The D is actually the seventh of the chord, which is not a very stable tone. And then at the very, very end, it resolves to the note D over a D major chord, which is kind of a much more complete resolution. So it's a really effective kind of scheme of tension and release. It does really well. Um, and like I said, obviously it's a huge hit. That's a big part of it. Uh, effective songwriting, uh, very crafty songwriting, and and that's it. So what I want to demonstrate here is the alternative, like how it would sound if instead of retaining the tension on this E, uh, these phrases would have all resolved to D, which is actually kind of a logical resolution because you, you can see here this is a D chord. So resolving to D, that would have been a chord tone rather than a tension note. Um, then this last E kind of goes, is, is syncopated, but it really belongs to this G chord. Again, if, if this resolved to D, that would have been a chord tone. Um, so what I did here is I used Isotopes RX-7, like I said, to lower all those E's to D to demonstrate that. So let me just play you. This is what the chorus sounds like originally. So that's E, dust, that's the tension, it's not, uh, it's not the tonic yet, still on E, so that's the first time it resolves melodically, but again, over the E minor chord, so it's not a complete resolution. So here, again, it resolves melodically to D, but it's over a G chord. D is a chord tone in G, which is uh, uh, which is four in, uh, in D major, but it's not as stable as resolving over a D major chord, which is what happens in the next and final phrase. Okay, so this is this is what it sounds like in, in the actual song. Now, like I said, what I did here is I took all these E's and I lowered them to D and as I mentioned, locally, if you don't take into account the entire context, it actually makes sense. It doesn't sound offensive to lower this to D. Let me play. Uh, let me play that for you. Oops, here. Right. Each of these phrases resolving to D makes sense, but in the larger picture, let me play you that entire first half of the chorus you can see how it actually um, harms the effectiveness of that final D. Right? It's not as effective when you've heard it three times before versus hearing it for the first time after having that E being held over. It's not terrible and the reason it's not completely terrible is because of that partial resolution, because of that E minor, 
which makes it an unstable tone and not a complete resolution. And it's also a different chord from, uh, compared to what we heard previously. We heard a D chord and a G chord. Um, but if I wanted to make it completely terrible, I would have resolved this, lower this bass line, uh, two half steps, two semitones. And this is what it would sound like in this case. And I think that most of you would agree with me is really, really dull. Let's listen to that. Right? This, this just like kills all the energy. So it's not that it would sound terrible. It's not that people would hear it and be like, oh my God, this sounds wrong or this sounds out of tune. But it would just be, a, you know, boring relatively relative to the original version of the song. Uh, and again, it comes back to the craft of the song. You can, you can make a song like this and most people won't be able to tell you what's wrong. They just won't be so interested. But a hit song has to stand out and a hit song has to keep listeners engaged. And this is one really effective way to keep listeners engaged. I already made a, um, a graph about Girls Like You that does something similar in the verse, the Maroon 5, and that was seven or eight weeks, number one. And again, I'm not saying that this is a formula that you have to do this in every song and it's going to be a number one song or in you know a top five song, but it's a really effective tool. So something to think about if your melody doesn't work and if your, your melody uh, feels kind of boring or dull, this is something you want to look at. Are you retaining tension? Are you increasing tension? Are you resolving it uh, in an engaging way? So something to think about. So until next time, Asaf Paris, Top 40 Theory.